Hey fanbots, I'm Hawkeye or Hawkeye. And I'm the director. And this is our special Valentine's Day edition of the Weekly Expo. Now today, as opposed to the last Weekly Expo we did, where we basically exclusively talked about Image, we are going to be handling another one of the big publishing houses, DC. You probably have heard about this Convergence event that's going to happen in May, I think. April, May. Where... Pretty much everything is ending. Right. All of DC's titles are being stopped. It's just two months of Convergence titles, which involve all pre-New 52 uh, series. Some people are really excited, and some people just don't really care. (laughs) Some people aren't fond of the multiverse. But we're excited. Oh, yeah. I think it's going to be great. Because in June, DC is rolling out how many? Like 24... New titles or oh, yeah, something. It's a, it's a bunch of new titles. A lot. I think it's 24. Oh my god! 24 newer retitled new Get it, girl. So DC is kind of taking maybe a page out of Boom Studios and um, Image Comics book. They're kind of introducing fun titles and like not so heavy and serious kind of things. Yeah, because one of the major complaints leveled at the New 52 that was started in, oh my god, was it 2011? Was that the reboot was unnecessarily gritty. Generally speaking, people were upset that they were taking that new trend where everything had to be realistic and punches and you know, that was kind of the thing because they, f- they felt like with the recent like Nolan movies and stuff, that was the trend. But then uh, some new series came out recently that I think have got them rethinking the way that they're making comics, who they're uh, marketing, marketing the comic towards, uh, the style, stuff like that, you know, comic series such as... Batgirl. Which has been kind of... I think it's been phenomenal, but I know there's kind of been a split division on it. Some people preferred the Gail Simone Batgirl. It was a little more serious, a little more emotional, uh, as opposed to the new Batgirl. It's a little more hip, a little more uh, modern. Um, but then other series like Harley Quinn, which has been a lot of fun, like just amazing fun. Uh, Jimmy Pomiotti and Amanda Connor are just phenomenal writers. So they just know how to make a character fun. And then, uh, oh, Gotham Academy, which we've both been reading and loving. Uh, watch the director's We've Got Issues for her latest review. I reviewed it. We can click it here. Yeah, click it here. Um, but these comics have had uh, decidedly l- more lighthearted, funner vibes on them. Funner. More fun? The publishers are really realizing that their audience isn't just, you know, diehard fans. You absolutely should go online. Um, we'll actually link it. Link it down below. Uh, we'll include the titles, but if you want more information, we'll include a link so you can read the full solicit, look at the art and stuff like that. Um, but some of the titles that I personally am really excited in, and this is all you're going to get because she's not so much a DC reader. She reads some titles, um, but most of them I... Uh, Say I make you read them. So he recommends them to me. That is very well said. But some of the titles like I'm really excited for are kind of like the out there titles. Like, like series like Batmite and Bizarro, which you know are gonna be just kind of crazy off the wall series. And then Bizarro, everyone knows Bizarro. Backward Superman, that's gonna be fun. Seeing that Palmiotti and Con- Connor Palmiotti and Connor are getting two more series. On top of Harley Quinn, they're also gonna be writing a Harley Quinn and Power Girl series, which is supposed to take place during uh, an event that happened recently in the Harley Quinn series where Harley Quinn and Power Girl were, like, lost in time and space for, like, two weeks or something like that. So that will be a lot of fun. And then they're doing Starfire, which is super exciting because I think a lot of people have been waiting for Starfire to get her own series where she's not written by Scott Vaudrey. I'm really excited to see that Dennis Medry, who's been a really big presence, uh, like, online, he's been doing a lot of really cool, like, 50s Batman um, 70s high school Star Wars, I think was one of the ones he did, and he recently did a design for Marvel for, um, Lady Spider, I think, for the Spider-Verse event. It's cool to see he's gonna be doing the art on that. We'll put the link below also to his blog. But all in all, you can tell DC is really making a push for diversity, for representation, for fun, and I know it seems like a weird kind of, like, blanket, but, like, it's, it's something that you're already seeing from companies like Image, where anyone can go in, make any sort of story, develop anything. You know, they, it was the, the new thing kind of, and then boom, which is encouraging a lot of, like, small-time, like, people who do web comics, people who do stuff on their own, and is uh, elevating them to full comic status, you know. Basically saying anyone can do this nowadays. It's nice to see DC taking that same initiative, 
such as they're releasing a Midnighter series, which features one of the like most prominent gay superheroes uh, in existence, Midnighter, who was originally introduced in the Wildstorm imprint. But he's finally getting his own series, and even better, it's actually being written by a prolific writer who subsequently is gay. So it's nice that they have a writer writing a character who's supposed to represent a whole community. Right, and it's actually a member of the community, so that's really cool. So it's really nice to see things like the writer Steve Orlando jumping onto Midnighter, and then Cyborg is going to be written by uh, another prolific uh, writer and filmmaker, David Walker, who subsequently is also black. So a black writer, a black character, a gay man and uh, writing a gay character. We're seeing way more female writers and female artists. Uh, Ming Doyle, who's currently working on the Vertigo title The Kitchen, is going to be writing for Constantine the Hellblazer, which I hope is actually going to be really good. We're seeing people who are previously artists taking over some more writing capabilities, such as Ming Doyle and on Robin, Son of Batman, Patrick Gleason, who's been writing the Robin, the Batman and Robin series, is going to be doing the writing and art. So I think that's pretty cool. Another title that I'm excited for, but they haven't really released much, is We Are Robin, uh, which is going to be written by Lee Bermejo and the artist by Carrie Randolph. And all I know about the series is they've showed a bunch of kids, like street level kids, wearing like, you know, modern clothing with like Robin colors. And I think it's going to be some sort of like kids inspired by Robin to do good type things. So again, you're seeing more of a reflection of, you know, youth, more of a, refle- a reflection of the modern circumstances and situations that people live in. And I think, you know, Bravo DC, finding a way to include that modernity, include that representation, but still doing it in a way that's familiar for a lot of people, in a familiar atmosphere. And I think that's what comics should be about. They should be a safe place. For people who, you know, maybe don't exactly fit into other kind of like the norm. Or even people who do. People who have read comics for a long time. People who are just getting into comics. You know, it should be a place where people can come together and see all sorts of storylines represented. And I think DC is making a really fantastic step in the right direction with that. Well said. (laughs) And although this is kind of off topic, Marvel is making an all-female Avengers team. I think it's literally the most delightful thing ever. Anyways, thank you for joining us today uh, and listening to us talk about things that I'm excited for. (laughs) Um, We hope you enjoyed. Please give us a like and absolutely, absolutely check out these new titles. Check out the lineup. Like we said, we're going to include a link down below. Go to your local comic book store. Pre-order them. Pre-order. That's really important. Mm -hmm. Because uh, otherwise, you know, if there's not enough popularity or not enough uh, desire for some of these series, you know, they're not going to last very long. And if there's something you want to read... Read it. Absolutely. Let and people know. DC isn't just going to make the comic if no one's reading it. Yeah. And if it's something that sounds interesting and you want to support it, you absolutely need to go out and support it. Please comment down below. Let us know which series you're looking forward to. Let, let us know how you feel about this new, uh, what DC is calling story over continuity thing that they're doing with all of their titles. Anyways, thank you for watching. Uh, please watch our next video in the series, uh, We've Got Issues, where I'm going to be talking about Red Conan and Red Sonia and Thor. And I'll be talking about Southern Bastards and Helpless Great Warrior. And then together, we're going to be talking about the Harley Quinn Valentine's Day, the the annual special, whatever it is. Ah, Okay. And as always, remember who you are and what you are. Don't go causing any trouble out there in that world. And absolutely, absolutely support your local, or just artists in general, support artists. The art, the craft of comics. I like this one. Alright. Bye! Bye! More fun vibe. A vibe that is mas fun. <laughs> I think so with the wave of popularity Wait, of like I didn't the, see that for the uh, Palmiotti and Connor. Palmiotti. Don't look at your phone. And that's it. What was my point? Don't go causing any trouble. I can't say this. <laughs>